we are going to run through a five value system for quick sketching. And you'll notice on the left, I have a little value chart with white, halftone, tone, shadow core, and drop shadow. Uh, we use drop shadow instead of cast shadow just because if you have two C's in the abbreviation, it gets confusing. One thing that you'll notice is that I like to start with just some tone on the shadow side and then refine everything from there. You don't have to do it that way. You can go directly to the, um, the value that you need. One thing that you'll notice too is that on the light side of an object, you use white and halftone. And on the dark side of the object, you use tone, core, and drop shadows. So you'll notice that in the, in the cast shadow, I'm using a little bit of the drop shadow and the core tone. And the uh, dark sides, I'm mixing core and tone. And in the light sides, I'm mixing the half tone and the white to be able to differentiate all of the planes. And one thing that you want to do when you're drawing boxes or anything angular is be sure that each side has an overall different value to it. And that's really important to do. And you'll see that um, no matter what happens, um, I try to do that every time. So if I put sort of more white on the uh, top plane, then I'm going to go onto the side with some halftone. And that's going to be able to help me differentiate every single side. If I'm doing an inside corner and I have tone on both sides, I want to just differentiate with a little bit of core in there as well. And, you know, I'm doing this digitally and taking advantage of that, doing some lasso and bucket fill stuff. But this method will work with any media, really. It doesn't matter. It'll work with paint. It'll work with markers, whatever you're, you're choosing to use. Um, pencils, charcoal, it doesn't matter. So what I want you to pay attention to is kind of the concept. And um, when you do this, you want to kind of work in large areas first and then break it down into small areas. Um, one of the advantages that you have in working in traditional media is that you can kind of sneak up and get subtle values. But the disadvantage is that you're not going to hit your exact value directly without a little bit of practice. And so it may take a little bit of work to go directly to the value that you need. And I think that's important to to work on um, over time is to just go directly to the value that you need because that'll that'll speed up your your overall process time as well. And the other thing that you can do is you can use a little bit of contour line in there too. Um, you can use core uh, tone for contour and that usually works out. Sometimes tone works out. It just depends on the, the overall effect that you're going for. So what you see here is um, a method where I just use some tone and then added um, different values to differentiate the, uh, the ground plane. And then here I'm going to pull in uh, other values such as the tone into the light side this time because this is kind of a crumply box and I'm adding some, some edges and then I'm gonna add some highlights to it um, where the light's gonna hit a little bit brighter. Here, um, this is kind of a, a rounded uh, square. So I think it's good to practice this kind of thing too. And here I'm definitely using the poster method where it's just, you know, light and dark tones and then going back through and differentiating within the dark tones. Um, I think that's a good way to do it sometimes because um, you get an immediate read on whether your lighting is correct and you're not fussing around juggling three or four values. You're just handling light and dark. And there's a lot of advantages to that. Um, one of the things that this system allows you to do as well is to use um, just a general 45 degree angle thing. Um, you can think about going 45 degrees in front or back and 45 degrees up and that 45 degrees up is going to give you uh, a lot of range for how to how to do this. So we're going to go through an example of a rounded object as well. So I've got a drawing of a coffee mug that I can kind of bump up and this time I started with the core. You know, you don't have to start the same way every time. Um, once you have the, the locations of all of these values in your head, it's going to be easy for you to apply this um, in any way that you see fit. So here, you'll notice that I'm paying more attention to transition tones, um, using half tones to transition around the edges. So I'm getting a, a, a transition all the way around the edge of the object. And then I'm going in here with a uh, cast shadow um, 
and it's going to go back at a slight angle. So here I've got my 45 degree angle. It's kind of 45 degrees uh, from the right, and 45 degrees up. And so it's going to cast shadows a little bit differently than, uh, than we've done with the other examples. And you can see that I've used the, the core shadow on the bottom going up the side. Um, I've got the drop shadow, I've got the core on the handle, and then I've got half tones in the lights, uh, white in the light side, and then I'm using half tone and tone to kind of transition on and off that, that shadow core. So that's all of them. And um, give this a shot in all of your object drawings, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate.